Welcome to another episode of Smell Engine Velocity. Today is a Sunday. It is 102 degrees outside, uh, and that's before all the feels like temperatures. Uh, if you're from Texas, you know what I'm talking about, like the heat index or something like that. It could be like 100 outside, but it feels like it's 110. All I know is that whenever I go outside, it feels like you're opening an oven in the middle of a bake cycle to go check on your food and all that heat hits your face and you feel like you're gonna die. So that's where we're at right now uh, with the heat. Uh, it's supposed to rain today, but I, I doubt it. I mean, look around. It doesn't look like anything remotely close to, to rain today. <laughs> well, as you can tell, from looking at the front of the bike I have the 360 camera on down today but I'm not a hundred percent sure I'll be able to use the footage because I got these like cool lens covers if there's anybody out there who owns a 360 camera you know that it is and it is incredibly important to put it in its case or to cover it all the time there's a lens on both sides, so no matter how you put it down, it's going to be sitting on a lens. And my X3, I cracked, because it slid off the seat and it fell. Like literally, anytime it's not mounted to something, I put a cover on it, because it will fall and it will crack. My X3, I was very careful with, but I forgot the, the head cover, the part that goes over the top. And of course, on a road trip, it fell on the lens and I sent it in and it cost me $120 to have replaced and it was cheaper than buying a brand new one uh, so if there's any advice I could give you when it comes to a 360 camera is protect those lenses um, there are plenty of things out there where I've seen people drill out the own lens and buy one on Amazon and put it together and all sorts of good stuff no no that's not for me I mean, yes, I like to fix my own things and modify my own things, but like when it says you have to drill out the old lens cover <laughs> while it's on top of incredibly expensive electronics, like, no, thank you. I'll just, $100, 100, 110 plus tax or shipping or whatever, that's not so terrible at all. Not so terrible. Uh, well, we are coming to the end of the summer I guess it's kind of getting close to the end of the summer school started for the kids and uh, I know that uh, parents across the nation or nations well I don't know I don't know about other nations but parents across the nations were celebrating when their uh, children went back to school um, maybe not all of them like maybe not homeschooled kids I suppose <laughs> or uh, or or kids that are very helpful around the house like now you know something like that I don't know I have no idea I have no idea uh, I do know that later on today uh, my the grandbaby is coming over uh, she's being dropped over off at six o'clock and we're gonna watch the grandbaby till tomorrow because our daughter's husband is joined the military and he's still at basic and there's really no one else to watch the baby and of course they don't make enough money to be able to cover that so there's always that right i'm trying not to speed i'm just doing a a, a, a comfy happy drive here everyone just a comfy happy drive so I already made plans if you didn't notice with my brother well I don't know if I didn't include that video footage I'll put it right here yeah I was thinking about uh, taking the orange ruckus to your shop is that okay because I want to swap the motor to a different GY6 because I think I messed up I got I had the timing off and I think I messed up the head again so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, the Ruckus and take it to the shop and I'm going to buy another 150cc motor and uh, put it on the um, put it on the Ruckus. Uh, hopefully my 28 mil cube is it 28? Yeah, my 28 millimeter carb will be good on that bike. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but 
I think when I put the thing on, I, my timing was a little bit off on the head and I ran it too long. And that's the reason why I was doing all that weird clunk, clunk, clunk sounds. Uh, so when I did that, I think I messed it up. Now it's not starting at all. So uh, that motor's been through hell. So I'm just going to go ahead and tear that motor out. And I'm going to go ahead and put something else, put another GY6 in. From there, we can decide the fate of the, the GY6. I don't know if I'm going to go back to 171 or if I just want to stick with a stock 150 head on there. Uh, right now, all I really want out of it is reliable. I'm not really big into like getting it to freaking super fly, super, super fast or anything like that at the moment. But yeah, we got that. I, I'm sure you guys are getting pretty tired of me riding around my CBR all the time, considering it's literally the only bike that I have that's running right now. Everything else is uh, on hold. So there was a little bit of a video and I made a short talking about uh, the uh, flow of traffic and there was a huge debate below it. I don't know what the legality is behind it um, because you know if you're if everyone around you going 75 within a 65 and you're going 65 and people are like having to swerve around you and junk are you the problem or are they the problem if a cop was to come by and give you a tick give hand out tickets who would be getting the tickets all the drivers that were driving like 75 or the one person who was driving super slow now let's establish some baselines they were on the right side uh, not on a freeway not on an interstate you know in the inter some states in the interstate if you're on the left lane going slow and people are passing you on the right that that gets you a ticket because the left lane is for passing only which i believe some people have a hard time understanding still to this day so yeah but anyways i was wondering whose fault would it be i mean would you give the person who was uh driving the speed limit and following the uh, the ticket but yet impeding traffic and making people have to drive dangerously or is it the people who are actually breaking the law that need to be uh put in uh, put in handcuffs well maybe not handcuffs but you know what i mean like just a speeding ticket or something like that uh, i got my gps watch today so i can actually see what my camera looks like and i don't have like some weird angles it actually feels kind of cool but i think it's the sweat I, I did put suntan lotion again i didn't wear my long sleeve jacket but i did wear my motorcycle vest so if i do slide i'll only lose the skin on my arms and not on my chest and my back which and my legs i have my motorcycle jeans i have my short gloves uh, so i still could break my pinkies potentially uh, and then I have my boots, but I have my ink short boots, so I still have the potential of breaking my ankles. Uh, I don't know where I'm going. I literally don't know where I'm going. I'm just gonna ride until I'm tired. Woo woo! this helmet sounds like when I'm riding at high speeds. Uh, it used to be when I would ride in slow speeds my helmet would sound good, but high speeds my helmet would sound bad. So this is a good test. Yeah this is a test. Let's call that the point of this ride today is the test to see how well my helmet sounds like on the freeway. Uh, now my mirrors are all wonky. Of course. Oh look, a Subaru Forester. Those are the Forester models that I really liked when they were like that. Oh look, it's lowered with wheels and everything. That's pretty cool. I like the Forester. And the one disadvantage of riding your motorcycle without sleeves on the freeway is the uh, 
is the sand and the little bits of dirt that hit your arm and feel like uh, little tiny lasers or needles hitting your hand. Yeah, it's not comfortable at all. And you're breaking. Actually, let me just go this way a little bit. Just get around the slow cars. I'm just following traffic. Just kidding. There's plenty of lanes for me to go slow in. <laughs> Something I noticed about the toll road, now that I'm driving past it. When you drive in the toll road, and you get close to the toll booth, the right lane is faster than the left lanes. Try it out one day. It seems like the left lanes clog up while the right lanes that still have toll booths, that still have easy tags, no change. Uh, none of our toll roads in Texas, have, or Houston, have a change thingamabobs anymore. It's all like cash. Get around this car real quick. Let's catch up to the Mercedes. Hey, Mr. Mercedes! I want a black license plate. I wonder how much that cost. Alright, I think after this there's no more freeway. It's just, uh, it turns into 249, the, the highway on here. I really miss riding with people. I'm really getting in the mood for riding with people again. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we can get some people together and ride some kind of ride that's, I don't know. I have plenty of gas. I might as well ride the whole loop. There was a time a long time ago when this road, 249, wasn't super ghetto. Now it's it's kind of pretty much just defaulted into that method of ghetto. Um, this is where I, there's like a lot of used car places here, pick aparts. Not that pick aparts indicative of ghetto, I'm just saying that's what's on here. It's a completely separate story from where I, I think it's ghetto, but. Um, and if you're watching this video and you live off of 249, I apologize. Um, but this is the only uh, place I've ever been to a Little Caesars Pizza where there's bars and a slot where you get your pizza. <laughs> so that, cause I, I assume because they're getting robbed all the time, they have to have bars. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm just gonna ride around for fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see everybody in the next video.